Why am I a fan of fruit? Because it's the sweet part of the plant. It's the part that the plant actually wants you to eat. It's colorful. It's clear the plant wants you to eat this. And that humans always seek this. The Hadza always seek fruit when it's available. They'll always eat honey when it's available. If you guys follow my buddy Liver King, Brian Johnson, you saw that he was recently in hot in you saw that he was recently in Tanzania with the Hadza, the same tribe that I visited last year, and he was sticking his hand into a tree to get honey, and then they were all just celebrating the fact they were eating this honey. The Hadza don't fear honey. It doesn't make them insulin resistant. It didn't make me insulin resistant. It won't make you insulin resistant because that fructose is different, and I've talked about this at length, but we'll unpack it a little more as we go on in this podcast. Going back to the original point and this paper from Matt Caberline, or excuse me, Joshua Rabinowitz, not Matt Caberline. Um, you can see here they have a graphic, low-dose fructose versus high-dose fructose, how much spills over into the liver versus in the portal circulation and the microbiota versus how much is metabolized in the small intestine. That is a very interesting mechanism by which the small intestine could absolutely be um, protecting us and or just metabolizing the fructose as it's supposed to, right? And like I said, they use isotopic, trapers, isotopic tracers and metabolomics. They use mass spec as well. Now, if you go down in this paper, you'll see that um, the highest expression of this enzyme ketohexokinase is in the liver, suggesting that the liver is the key site of fructose catabolism. But we know now that the small intestine is a key piece of this as well. Further on in this paper, they do note that there are questions about how does fructose cause fatty liver? One possibility is that the small intestine converts fructose into a hepatotoxic metabolite. I think that's probably less likely. Um, for example, the mitochondria, excuse me, for example, the microbiota makes butyrate, intestine makes copious amounts of glycerate from fructose, but not glucose. Is it possible that's leading to triglycerides? Maybe. I think it's more likely that fructose may induce liver toxicity via itself reaching the liver. This is, I think, what Rick Johnson would suggest is that when there's too much fructose in the circulation and it reaches the liver, that fructose gets metabolized in the liver via the enzymes there. That process doesn't have breaks on it like glucose metabolism does, leading to ATP consumption. When you must phosphorylate fructose with phosphofructokinase, you use up ATP, use up that phosphate group, that becomes ADP, and that ADP can accumulate and lead to AMP through the action of enzyme systems in the liver. I'll show you that in a moment. But that's the canonical thinking now of why fructose is bad. Now, what is interesting to note is that if you are eating fruit or if you're not eating massive amounts of fructose, in fruit, I would actually not be a fan of any processed fructose, and I'll talk about that in a bit as well. The small intestine might be protective against this, and you might not actually be getting any significant amount of fructose going to the liver or causing any of the changes that people are so concerned about. You have to really be careful to look at how much fructose they're using in these animal models and whether this is actually causing a problem in humans. As uh, Joshua Rubinowitz goes on to say, fructose may cause liver ATP depletion as KHK, ketohexokinase, uh, fructokinase consumes ATP or lipogenesis as fructose catabolism bypasses the key regulated sub of glycolysis, phosphofructokinase, and thereby provides uh, an uncontrolled source of triosis. But we find that low doses of fructose are 90% cleared in the small intestine, higher doses pass substantially to the liver. This reflects saturation of small intestinal fructose clearance. Based on this, we propose that the small intestine shields the liver from fructose and excessive doses of fructose overwhelm the small intestine, spilling over to the liver where they cause toxicity. Liver or intestine-specific KHK, ketohexokinase knockout mice would be a fascinating experiment. Now, they'll go on to talk about the fact that intestinal fructose clearance is enhanced by both prior fructose exposure and by feeding. So if you're eating fruit, your body can upregulate the enzymatic systems in the small intestine to really process this. Now, they say here, a key difference between the health effects of fiber-rich fruits, perhaps even solid sweets like cake, I would not agree with that, and juices, sodas is the rate of intestinal fructose release. So I think that what we're seeing here is perhaps a mechanism of evolutionarily consistent consumption of fructose in fruit with all the other compounds that come with it, nitric oxide precursors, et cetera, honey with nitric oxide precursors. And here we go. You guys are going to love this. Maybe this is a benefit of fiber. If you're going to eat fructose, you might as well eat it and fruit with a little bit of fiber, maybe that slows down the absorption, allows the small intestine to do it more. In general, if you guys have followed me for any amount of time, you know that I'm not a fiber snob. I'm not a fiber zealot. I don't believe that fiber is the end all and be all for a variety of reasons. If you're getting some fiber in fruit, I don't think that's horrible for you, but I'm not one of these guys that believes you need more fiber, more fiber, more fiber. People sometimes ask me, how do you get enough fiber without vegetables? And I say, I don't think you need more fiber than what is in fruit, honestly. 
I actually think there's a lot of good evidence that humans don't really need much fiber at all. But in the case of fructose, fiber may be beneficial. Maybe the fruit and fiber is somehow playing into this role in the small intestine. Regardless, the take-home message here is that it's pretty darn clear that moderate amounts of fructose, even eating multiple pieces of fruit in a meal, the Joshua Rabinowitz study suggests that we are looking at one gram per kilogram of fructose in a meal, 70 grams of fructose in a meal for a 70 kilogram adult. That's a lot of fructose. And that that is going to give your small intestine the ability to process this fructose that's not going to arrive in the liver. That's great. That's probably what's going on in my physiology and your physiology if you're eating an animal-based diet. 